Here I have the Gen 2 5 inch firebox stove. It comes in that white cotton delivery bag. It comes standard with two fire sticks and an ash pan. The trick for the ash pan, rather than trying to pry it off with your fingers, is to just open it up like a book. The ash pan will pop off automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. You can see that the fire grate drops down into place. That holds it all into position so uh, you don't have to worry about assembling anything. Um, you will notice that the shape is not perfectly square. It's a little narrower on this side than it is on this side. Slide it in with the narrow side going into the wide side of the firebox. So if you always remember that the wind damper is the wide side, it makes it easy to remember that and then you can just slide that into its its regular burning position. As all of these uh, pieces of metal heat up, they expand and the fitment becomes much much tighter. So if this feels too loose to you uh, when it's cold, just understand that it will tighten up when it is hot. So it's very important that this be a little bit loose when it is cold. One adjustment that you may need to do at some point in time on your firebox is the fit of this edge down against its joining edge here um, on this side. So if that becomes loose, just understand that uh, you know that it's it's really quite easy to just push these hinges down a little bit and and adjust this. There's a bend right here in the in the material, and by pushing that down a little bit, you can tighten up that fit there until you get it to where you like it and it's uh, just right for you. If these if these notches up on the top are a little bit too tight, which you can see these work you know, perfectly. Uh, but if you get yours and they seem like they're just a little bit tight, you can put your fire stick in, kind of bend it one direction, bend it the other direction, and that will open those notches up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in these. So th this one seems to be fine in all of its positions. Um, but those are just a couple of a little tuning adjustments that can be done by the user uh, to get your firebox working and keep it working just the way you like it. A concern that I run into sometimes is as people are using their firebox and they're in a hurry, they want to pack up their gear and continue to hike on um, and they want to maybe dip their hot firebox into the stream to cool it down quickly so they can pack it up. I do not recommend doing that. Allowing your firebox to slowly cool down is actually good for the metal. Causing it to cool down very, very quickly can cause it to have stresses in the metal and can cause it to become brittle, can cause warping. Um, it's just not good for the metal itself. So I have a firebox here that I have been using and that I have not cleaned up. So you can see that, that after using it, it becomes a darker color. Um, and that's just the normal patina that the material will take on um, as it becomes uh, hot from that extremely high temperature of a wood fire. So I have some paper towel here and what I'm going to do is show you what I do to clean up my stoves and to maintain them and keep them nice. So I've just got this little piece of paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this cooking oil and go ahead and just put this on the paper towel. I'm putting it on fairly heavy and just going quickly from panel to panel. I'm just putting a coat of it on and then move on to the next panel. And notice I'm starting on the outside of the stove where it's less dirty and then I will finish on the inside of the stove where there is more soot and ash. Now I'll go ahead and start wiping off the inside panels. You can use any kind of fat that you might have available to you, um, even if that's uh, bacon grease, um, you know, just anything will work. And then if you are planning on putting it away for more of a long-term storage, 
then I would recommend you use something like olive oil or a mineral oil, um, something that won't go rancid, but that oil will protect the surfaces from corrosion and it makes your firebox just look real nice. So I've done all the sides in here and now I'm just doing the bottom fire grate. I'll even put some on the uh, ash pan. I'm gonna go ahead and kick up that fire grate and do the bottom side of it. Then you go back through with a second paper towel and then I'm just gonna start the process over again and just wipe everything down. This takes off the excess oil. A little bit of oil does make it into the hinges and just keeps it operating really nicely and smoothly. So it's just a really uh, a, a nice way of maintaining your firebox. And I don't worry nearly as much about getting all of the oil off of the outs of the inside of the firebox as I do on the outside because um, it all just closes in and and you don't uh, you don't have to handle it on the inside, but it is good to get that coating of oil on the material. You can see that you know it's kind of cleaned up and nice. You close it up, closes up nicely. Let's wipe off the excess off of our ash pan, and this is ready to to go away into its case and be packed up. So that's how I maintain and take care of my firebox stoves and uh, that's how I recommend uh, you do it as well. It comes with the two fire sticks which can be placed in these upper positions for supporting a larger pot or a pan. Um, it can also be put in this narrower set of positions for supporting a small cup or a very small pot. Here at the top these are the new holes. And this creates the one inch head space uh, from the jets to the bottom of your pot. So that's a really nice position uh, for the Trangia alcohol stove. Now some people um, feel that a little bit of a lower position is a better position. So if you go down to this next position, uh, this is a little bit closer to the inch and a half from the bottom of your pot to the jets on your alcohol burner and then you can also continue to go even lower and lower right on down the line and the lower you get to a certain extent um, the hotter temperature your Trangia alcohol burner will run at um, because more flame above the Trangia creates more heat feedback so you're running the sticks underneath the wind damper and then you slide your ash pan in on top and then create a little air gap here and this creates a nice position for the Esbit solid fuel tablets. This allows the combustion air to come in from the bottom, mix with your fuel and then exhaust out the front. You can also just center your uh, ash pan and center your Esbit fuel tablet if it's a calm day and there is no breeze that, that is a very efficient position okay so as far as optional fuels go um, you also have a lot of different positions here with these diamond shaped holes there there are actually two positions on this side and three positions on this side offset by a half inch all the way down so that gives you a position you can run these through. It creates a platform um, where you can use uh, sterno fuel. Uh, that's a little high for this, so you'd want to take it down a little bit lower. So this is this is probably going to be a, a more proper height for the sterno fuel or alternative alcohol burners. Um, but this is one that people commonly make. Um, but you can see you can you can generally find a position that will work for almost anything that will fit inside of the firebox stove. 
and the firebox stove is large enough to hold the Pathfinder stainless steel stove as well. So a lot of people have this size of pot um, that the uh, isobutane canisters fit down into. Well, these are a perfect size to fit down into the firebox. So, you know, maybe you're using this up here on top and uh, you've been doing, you know, your cooking or maybe you've made some, you know, hot cocoa or whatever else and your fire has burned down to hot coals. Well, you can go ahead and move these uh, fire sticks down to a lower position to where they're closer to your hot coals to keep your your hot chocolate or your coffee or your water for tea or whatever it is you have um, and then you can move it down to a lower position you know to just it the, the firebox just adapts uh, very easily to whatever it is you're doing. This clean canteen 64 ounce water bottle, uh, you know, it fits down in and works really nicely in any of the positions, whether it be on top or all the way down. Now here's something that maybe people don't know that's a little bit off subject is that the 64 ounce clean canteen actually fits into uh, this size pot. So this is the Ollie Camp LT pot and it also comes in an XT which has the uh, heat uh, exchanger on the bottom for quick boiling. But these all fit like a space saver cup uh, with the 64 ounce clean canteen uh, water bottle. Let's talk a little bit about fueling your firebox. Uh, you have a very large feed hole. This is an inch and a half um, by five inches or by four and a half inches so it's a very large uh, sized hole that you can very easily drop sticks in from the top without the need to lift your paw. They're offset from each other so that your fuel can actually be crossed so I'm going to slide these in here in this side and then I'm going to slide these through on this side now, the benefits of having your fuel crossed is that it creates turbulence, uh, which, which is a, uh, a very key component to efficiency. And then the upwards angle that's created actually creates flame velocity. So let me show you what that looks like on the inside. Okay, you can see the way those are angled up and the way they cross really creates for a nice efficient fire. But in situations where fire is struggling because of a high elevation or very very bitter cold temperatures uh, the, I would recommend moving to a very very small diameter sticks um, and then using more of them. That will allow more air to mix in and, uh, and will help your fire to stay hot and healthy and then larger diameter sticks will burn a little more slowly and a little bit of a lower temperature. And that works both for side feeding and for top feeding your fire. That general rule of thumb, you know, if things aren't quite hot enough or your fire isn't burning well enough, use a little smaller diameter stick. Another way of feeding or fueling your firebox is to preload it. Now you can preload it just with sticks like these that you would break into about hand length pieces and then you put those sticks in horizontally. You don't want to stack them in vertically because it will just become way too hot. But by putting them in horizontally you can actually fill your whole fire chamber with wood and then light it on the top and let it burn its way down. The Swedish fire torch method. Now there's two different ways you can do that. You can do that with smaller diameter uh, sticks that you've cut that will fit down in and what you do is you create a space in the center that the air can flow up through. These are actually a little tall. I would recommend keeping your sticks right at this level of, the, of that lower uh, level of the firebox. These are about a quarter of an inch too tall. 
So I would keep them down a little bit lower so that you have plenty of room for your fire to exhaust out both sides. So I generally use a piece of our Easy Light fire starter. I break off a small piece and I drop it down in the center and that is generally enough to get that thermal column going and the Swedish fire torch starts to run. The other way that you can do the Swedish fire torch is to take a larger diameter log like this and split it into fourths and then you take the corners and you rotate them into the corners of the firebox so then the rounded part of the log is aiming inward which is then where you create your thermal column and you build your fire in the center so you can really pack a lot of fuel in there with this method because you can use even larger diameter logs than what I used here and you can really fill in that space and have a fairly small hole in the center. Turn your ash pan upside down and I just put it right here in front so it's easy and I hold it there and then what one thing I do is I keep the fire stick anytime I'm using the fire sticks in the firebox I only put it through as far as necessary so that it's sticking out a little ways that will help it to not get quite as hot it still may get you know hot enough to burn you um, but it won't get as hot as it will if it's you know pushed all the way in like that so I'm going to turn this sideways. If you haven't pushed all the way in, they're going to get so hot, you're not going to be able, to, you know, to handle them. And even when they're out like this, they, you know, you still have to be careful because they will get hot. And, you'll, you know, you may need to use a stick or another fire stick, uh, something else to touch those because they may get too hot. With a breeze running this direction, and that actually, you know, creates kind of a ramp and just drives the air right into this hole here which really feeds the fire and stokes the fire you know similar to a fan powered stove um, slide your other stick through this oblong hole and doing it with this out of the way is a little easier because you can see down through your firebox to see where that other ob round hole is so you can get it into position and then what you do is if you put this in and then go up at a little bit of an angle and then slide it in then you can catch that that other fire stick in its position so I'm just going to rotate this around so now you have the ability to slide your damper open and closed now once again everything will get hot so what I recommend is when you're starting your fire torch you have this open okay so you've got your fire torch all in here and set up and you get it burning and then when it starts to get a little bit hotter than what you want it to be then you can use a stick you know use whatever you need to to just go ahead and, and slide that closed so there are really a lot of different ways to use uh, the gen 2 firebox stove which is part of the fun is uh, kind of experimenting with the different methods and techniques. I'm going to go into some of the optional accessories for the firebox um, and kind of talk about care and use for those. So one thing we have is the adjustable fire grate. Now what the adjustable fire grate is good for is, is setting up a higher platform for your fire so now now this is nice and high this is a perfect place for wood pellets uh, this way you don't have to use very many wood pellets you can use you know a half a cup or a cup of wood pellets you know may be enough for your cooking project this elevates them up nice and close to your cooking surface uh, so uh, they become uh, very efficient and effective for cooking this is also a great position uh, if you're using one of the optional grill plates. You can put charcoal briquettes up in here and that gets them nice and close to your grilling surface. But these side holes, it doesn't matter if you're using the inside or the outside, either one will work just fine. In fact, that gives you that many more positions um, 
because you have a lot of different options uh, as far as position holes go. Uh, we do have the regular sized short grill plate and then we do have the long extended grill plate. Now the grill plates are both equipped with this small hole here and that is so that it can be handled with the fire sticks. So you can put your fire stick in and that will hold that there. Now one thing I do want you to notice is that there's a little T which indicates the top. Um, sometimes what will happen is people will have a, ha a hard time figuring out how how to put this in. See I've got this upside down so the notches aren't matching up. So we've added this little T so that people will know that it's the top, that it needs to be facing upwards and then you just need to align the wide side with the wide side and then it will go right in. Okay. Now once again this is equipped with these notches. Hopefully I'm not going out of frame here. So you have the notches and the reason they're equipped with the notches is because you don't want to put your grill plate on in the very beginning. You want to wait till you have your hot coals all developed and it's ready for grilling. If you have a full flame underneath your grill plates you're going to overheat your grill plate and damage your grill plate. The grill plates are intended for grilling. They're not intended as a trivet or a pot support. So that's why we've uh, enabled them to be put on after your fire has died down and it's a, at a grilling temperature type fire then you can put your grill plate in place put your meat on top cook your meat and you're in good shape okay and then you can also remove it the same way you put your use this little half moon shape cutout over here that allows you to pry up or pry down to put your grill plate, your boil plate, your extended grill plate, they all have this same little half circle cutout which enables you to remove or replace any of your accessories. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the boil plate position. This, uh, this is the same uh, places that you put them for the solid fuel tablet position. And this you can set up um, before you even start your fire, but you can also put it in after your fire has started by use of the fire sticks. But that gives you a nice position for your stainless steel space saver cups. Um, and then that also, you know, you can close up your wind damper so it's just completely boxed in and that becomes a really nice little boiling system and then the exhaust comes out the front here. Now this also works for um, stainless steel water bottles okay so you can put this considerably lower you know by using the diamond shaped holes or by using the oblong holes here you can create a platform that's quite a bit lower uh, so that you can have a boiling system uh, for your stainless steel water bottles. Now one precaution with that is make sure when you're heating up water that you have your cap removed so you're not building up pressure inside of your water bottle. Okay, the Gen 2 5 inch firebox stove also has the ability to work with the Trangia gas burner attachment. Now this actually works best with a round set of fire sticks. Now if you purchase the Trangia gas burner attachment from us and leave a message in the comment field that it is for the 5 inch firebox stove we will include a set of these round fire sticks uh, with your Trangia gas burner attachment for free. They go in this highest aub round uh, hole position. Uh, you put your valve end in first it goes down in and then goes through the the hole in the side that's the side feed hole and then you go ahead and slide uh, your Trangia down in and it actually clicks into position. So you can actually put this in several height positions. One other kind of advanced position 
and that is the horizontal baking position. Now this posi position actually requires a second set or an optional second set of fire sticks. So you actually run this through this long, the, it's the top long aub round hole on each side and then you go into the shorter notch on the far side of the top and then you do that crisscross and you do that all the way on both sides all the way around the stove and what this does is it just creates this really nice cradle here for holding uh, a pot in this horizontal baking position so this allows you to bake in your firebox stove and here I have one of our zebra pots that we offer on our site that have the metal clips and these metal clips actually allow the handle to work as an oven door latch so you open the handle then you can take your oven door off so this this works really nicely uh, you can even use your optional grill plate as an oven rack uh, inside of your zebra loop handle pot. So uh, the other thing that this does is it creates an air gap here on the sides which allows the hot air to flow up and around the pot um, helping to to heat your uh, improvised oven just a little bit better and more evenly. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and close up the firebox and put the ash pan back on and one thing I did want to point out is the new Gen 2 firebox while it comes with two fire sticks standard uh, it has the ability to hold an additional two fire sticks so if you do decide to purchase the optional uh, set of fire sticks there is a place now where those will actually click into your firebox and so you can hold all four fire sticks on your firebox. I'm sure there's some um, some aspects of the firebox that I managed to miss, um, but uh, you know, please let's talk about it down in the comment section, and uh, we can certainly discuss uh, anything you would like to talk about down there. And uh, you know, I always like to talk about stoves, so I really appreciate everybody. I appreciate your support. And uh, I really love the comments and uh, interacting with my customers and uh, helping everybody get the most from their Gen 2 5-inch folding firebox stove. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.